Welcome back to Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug. And in this video, we're going to continue looking for patterns in the periodic table. So when we're talking about patterns, we've already discussed uh, some patterns with regard to electron configurations and ionization and the charges that ions make on the periodic table. If you're not sure about that or haven't seen that video yet, I suggest that you go back and take a look at that so that you can see what type of patterns I'm talking about. Well, in this video, we're looking at a couple of questions. We're going to first of all talk about the size of individual atoms. So let's start by comparing which of these two atoms is larger. Lithium, which is this atom right here on the periodic table, Li, or cesium. Which of those two atoms, if you had to compare them, do you think is actually larger? Maybe has a larger radius? Well, most of us would probably say just based on our intuition from the periodic table that it would be cesium. And that is correct. That is the correct answer. Cesium is the larger of those two atoms. We actually find that there's a trend here. As you go down the periodic table from top to bottom, the size of the atoms, or something that we call the atomic radius, the actual distance, the average distance from the nucleus to the outermost edge of the uh, uh, electron cloud gets larger. And so, for example, uh, cesium is going to be much larger than these atoms up here, like lithium or sodium. And that has to do with a couple of things. It's mainly the fact that there are more energy levels. In these atoms up here, like, like lithium, for example, it only has two energy levels, whereas cesium down here has a lot more than that. It seems to have six energy levels. If you want to, you can uh, perhaps uh, compare this to our stadium model of the atom that I showed you in an earlier uh, video in this playlist. Basically, if we have lithium, it has two energy levels. Imagine that it has two levels in the stadium. So you've possibly been to a stadium that has only two levels. You know, there's a playing field down here, there's a level of seats, and there's another level of seats. That's not really a very big uh, stadium or arena. On the other hand, cesium has six energy levels. So imagine a stadium that has six levels. So here's the playing field, but then we have a level of seats, another level of seats, and then it gets three, four, five, six. Maybe we're talking about one of the largest basketball or uh, football stadiums that you've ever been to has that many level of seats. It's much, much larger because it has more levels. Well, the same thing here. More energy levels translates to a larger size or a larger atomic radius. We can also say that since we have more electrons, more energy levels, you know, those electrons are repelling each other more effectively, and so they're able to spread out a whole lot more. So that's a trend. As you go down the table, it gets larger. As you go to the top, the atoms get much smaller. Now, what if you have two atoms that are in the same uh, period of the periodic table, which means they have the same number of energy levels? So let's compare potassium, which is right here, with krypton, which is over here. Which of those two atoms is larger? Well, if you just think about this, a lot of students will say, well, krypton, because it has more electrons. But as it turns out, that's actually not correct. As it turns out, potassium is larger. Now, that may seem uh, the opposite of what we would expect, but as it turns out, that is correct. But potassium is, is much larger than krypton is. Now, let's think about why that's the case. And by the way, uh, the trend for this uh, does hold as you go from left to right across the periodic table the atomic radius, or the size, actually gets smaller. Why is that? Well, let's think about this in terms of not electrons necessarily, but in terms of energy levels. Now, potassium and krypton are both in period four, which means that they both have four energy levels. Well, what do they have that's fundamentally different about them that might cause this to happen? Well, it has to do with something that we don't talk about too much in chemistry. It's the protons. Now, in chemistry, like I've said several times already, we mainly focus on the electrons. 
chemistry is mainly about electrons doing things. Uh, I'm kind of fond of saying that the only main job that protons have is to keep the electrons from flying away. And so if we think about that, potassium, let me draw this a little bit larger here, potassium has an atomic number of 19. That means it has 19 protons to try to pull in those four energy levels. And so we can imagine how good of a job it does at that. On the other hand, krypton over here has almost twice as many protons, 36 protons, trying to pull in the same number of energy levels. So think about that. We have a much stronger positive charge here. And so it's able to pull in those energy levels much more tightly since we have more protons. And so that's the reason that these atoms on the right side of the periodic table tend to be smaller than the ones on the left side because they have more protons. And so, and so if we're trying to look at the trend here, we've already said that as you go down, they're larger. Well, guess what? As you go to the left, they're also larger. So we have that trend. If we go to the right and toward the top, those atoms tend to get smaller. They have smaller atomic radii. So you can probably guess, what is the smallest atom on the periodic table? Well, you're, if you guessed helium, then that sounds like it's a pretty good answer, you know, top right. What about the largest atom? Well, the largest atoms would be down here. Cesium, francium, those would be the largest atoms on the table. Let's try another trend. Before we do that, let's take a look at this graphic, though, because this actually is a, is a nice uh, photographic or a nice, uh, I should, not a photograph, but it's, it's a nice pictorial representation of this. And once again, the pattern holds. The ones that are toward the bottom and left, those are larger. And the ones that are toward the top and the right, those tend to be a whole lot smaller. All right, now let's go on to our next trend, and that's called electronegativity. Electronegativity is just defined as the attraction that an atom has for an electron. Now, since these atoms over here that are noble gases already have an octet, and, and they're not really in the business of trying to attract electrons, I'm just going to kind of ignore them for right now. Technically, they do have an electronegativity, but we're not going to worry about it at this stage. But if we include the other atoms on the periodic table, would you guess that the ones on the right over here want to attract electrons or the ones on the left want to attract electrons? Well, based upon what we've learned already in this course and in this chapter, in fact, the atoms on the right, those are just one electron away from having an octet. They really want to attract that electron in so they can have the full eight. And so generally speaking, these atoms over here in the halogen group and in the oxygen group, nitrogen group as well, these over here on the right side have a higher electronegativity. The ones on the left side over here, like lithium, sodium, potassium, you know, these in this neighborhood here, magnesium, they don't want to attract electrons, do they? They aren't trying to attract. They are trying to get rid of electrons they already have. They're trying to lose electrons to get an octet. So these over here would have a very low electronegativity as you go to the, the left. Now, what about up and down? We know that you know all of these halogens are going to have a pretty high electronegativity, but which ones will have the highest? Well, it would be the ones at the top. The ones that are the highest up attract electrons the most. Now, I just said a few minutes ago, what is trying, what in the atom is actually trying to attract electrons? Well, it's the protons, isn't it? They're, they're the, it's their job to attract and pull in electrons. Well, in this case, we have fluorine. It only has two energy levels. And so the nucleus is a whole lot closer to a potential electron that it could pull in as opposed to like AT down here. You know, it's got six energy levels, and so the nucleus is a whole lot farther away 
from a potentially uh, attracted electron. So these down here at the bottom of the table are going to have a much lower electronegativity. And so the ones at the top are higher. So it, if you're trying to find that trend, top right, higher. So fluorine actually has the highest electronegativity of them all. Oxygen and nitrogen and chlorine are pretty high up there as well. And if you want to look at atoms with low electronegativities, look to the bottom and look to the left. So once again, cesium and francium and barium, radium, all these down here are going to have very low attractions for electrons. Let's look at one more trend on the periodic table, and that's something called first ionization energy. Now, this is the energy that's required to remove the very last electron from an atom. So if we're thinking about neon as an example, you know, it has a it has a, a nucleus there, it has two energy levels, and we're talking about removing that very last a p electron from neon. It's going to require a whole lot of energy, isn't it? Because it's already got that stable 8. It's got an octet. It's stable. It's going to be very difficult to remove an electron. You're going to require a lot of energy to do that. So generally speaking, the ones on the right side are going to have a higher first ionization energy. On the other hand, look at these over here like sodium. You know, sodium has three energy levels. There's the nucleus. It's got one, two, three. And in that last energy level, it only has one electron, that last S electron. And it's already trying to lose the electron, isn't it? So it's not going to require a whole lot of energy to, to pull that energy, or that, that electron away. So the ones on the left are going to have a much lower first ionization energy. So that's the trend. So you go to the right, it's higher. As you go to the left, it's lower. Now, how about up and down? Well, if we think about these atoms at the top of the periodic table, they only have, you know, maybe two or three energy levels. And so the protons are able to pull on those electrons a little bit more effectively. So as it turns out, the ones that are higher up on the table will actually have a higher first ionization energy as well. You know, because the electrons are just closer to the nucleus. And so the nucleus can pull them in a little bit uh, more effectively. Well, how about the ones at the bottom of the table? Well, these are going to have a lower first ionization energy. Think about cesium as an example. Cesium already wants to lose one electron, as we've talked about in a previous video. But how does that compare to lithium and sodium? Because they want to do the same thing. Well, in the case of cesium, its last electron is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the sixth energy level. So imagine that. There's the nucleus, and that last electron is already 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 energy levels away. So that last electron can just almost escape without, with hardly any energy required. You know, that, that electron is so far away from the nucleus, it can just almost, you know, sneak away without ever being noticed practically by the nucleus. So it's not going to require much energy for that to happen. So the trend, once again, is as you go down and to the left, first ionization energy is lower. As you go to the right and to the top, first ionization energy is higher. Now, there are lots of other trends we could talk about. Uh, in AP Chemistry, we talk about trends such as effective nuclear charge. We talk about shielding effect. Uh, one that we talk about is electron affinity that I do want you to know the definition of for first-year chemistry. Electron affinity is just the energy change associated with the gain of an electron. So that's just the definition of that. We're going to let that be, and in a future course, we'll talk about a trend for that. Well, at this point, you are at the end of the chapter about electrons and atoms. I hope you've learned something. I, I hope you've learned some trends about the size of atoms, atomic radius, 
Hope you've learned the trend of electronegativity and first ionization energy. If you learned something, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that we can learn some more chemistry together. Once again, I'm Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back again on my channel soon. My channel soon.